Hey guys, what's up? It's Sean, Autotopia LA. It is the week before SEMA, the countdown has begun. I'm gonna throw it out to you guys again that we're always looking for cool stuff to shoot around here. So if you got something that you think fits the channel, please hit us up. In the meantime, we're about to shoot this. That's right, a 1985 Chevy S10. Why? Why are we shooting a 1985 Chevy S10? Well, you know we like modified stuff. You know I like my friend Nino's cars. He's got a bunch of really cool, very unique, interesting ones. This is one of Nino's very interesting toys. Is it a stock Chevy S10 pickup truck? Come on, seriously. No, this thing has an LSX motor in it. This thing is making over 600 horsepower, making mid 500s at the wheels. It is a monster what he built here. So we're gonna go do our usual thing, go for a drive, talk you through some of the details of what he's done to this build and probably have a ball driving it. So hold on, man, because here we go. Here we go for a ride in my buddy Nino's 1985 Chevy S10 pickup. You know, it's funny, I'm laughing that I'm actually excited about this, but the truth is, I am. This is a truck that's making over 600 horsepower. As a matter of fact, the builder, Nico over at Vintage Motor Works, is one of the guys that worked on this. He said this thing's making about 625 horsepower at the crank. It's a LSX motor, 427. It's a fully blueprinted motor. This is all forged internals. You know, this is a fully properly built motor. This car does not have turbos. It doesn't have any forced induction at all. This is an all motor truck. So a couple little background things. You know, Nino 18 years ago ended up with this truck. One of his coworkers had driven it basically into the ground Although it had never been in an accident, it was totally straight. Nino got it for, for the whopping price of free. That's right, he paid zero dollars for this truck. And it had the little, I, I believe this thing came stock. It was a 2.8 liter six cylinder motor in here. He passed it over to his son. His son kept getting beat by, uh, there was a certain guy that kept beating him. So they went to a bigger six cylinder. I think it was a 4.2, 4.3 liter six cylinder motor. That was okay for a little while, but Nino being Nino had to go a little bigger than that. So he put a, an LS1 motor in here and he was getting pretty decent horsepower out of that. Eventually the motor went on him and he went, okay, let's build this thing a little bit. So in comes an LSX but a fully blueprinted one. I mean, think about it. This is all forged internals. This is a, this is not a cheap motor that he's got on this pickup truck. 625 at the crank, which puts us, what, mid 500s at the wheels. More than enough power in this little thing. The weight on this is mid 2000s, you know? It could be upwards as high as maybe 28, 2900 pounds. Power to weight, uh, power is definitely winning in this battle. It's funny, actually, when you're driving it, if you're just easy on it, it's actually not a bad driving little truck. Suspension wise, they definitely dealt with some stuff knowing that they were gonna be putting that much power to the ground. So up front, he's got QA1 coilovers, all mated though to the stock suspension up front. On the rear, it is leaf spring rear, with Caltrax to, you know, obviously the intent is try to get more of the power to the ground. It's squats. They definitely gave it stopping power all around. It's got Willwood brakes on it, Willwood master cylinder. It's got some pretty sticky Nitto tires on here. The 285s in the rear. Can't remember what he has up front. I want to say they're 225, 235, somewhere around there. I'll have to look. Might've missed on that one. And then he did some pretty cool touches to this thing. I gotta admit, very much his flavor, you know? 
<laughs> Nino doesn't build vehicles for you and me. He builds them for himself. All the touches on this are very much his style, the two-tone exterior paint job. You know, little things, spoiler on this thing. Cool little touch. The bumper that you see up front isn't stock. You'll notice there's a couple of little insert lights on there. Uh, he's got Boyd Coddington wheels on here, which, you know, you got to remember, this car, it, it's kind of dated to the period that it was built. It doesn't look like something that was done last week, last month, this year. This, this has a certain dated look to it. Sorry, Nino, I'm not giving you trouble, brother. Just has a dated look to it, a certain styling about it. Some other mechanical stuff. The rear end's a stout rear end. He's running a, a Curry 9-inch rear end on here. The transmission on here is GM 4L80E, but it's been heavily, heavily rebuilt recently. All, all the internal stuff was dealt with to, once again, deal with the amount of power that he's putting down in this. Very neato, man, to go as crazy as putting, you know, over 600 horsepower into this. I don't know how much money he's got invested. I didn't ask him. It's it's obviously more than more than most anyone would do on a on a 1985 Chevy S10 truck. I love the interior, though. I got to admit, and you know, it's it's always one of my big things is where do we spend the bulk of our time in a car? We don't spend it out looking around our car. We spend it on the interior of the car. I think it's a really very cool unique interior done on this i i think it's hilarious that you've still got the stock door panels those are about to get changed i love the changes they made to the dash i think it looks great subtle but very cool the auto meter gauges look great in here obviously they function well i think the carbon fiber touch on the across the whole face of the dash is really nice the seat, believe it or not, this is actually still the, the original framework for the bench seat that was in here, although with some pretty cool custom upholstery. It looks like it's two bucket seats in here, but it's actually the original framework for the bench seat. And I think the seat looks killer in this thing. I really love what he did. The diamond stitching, I don't mind at all. The big blue stitching, I think it looks great. I really genuinely think it's cool. The B&M shifter. I mean, this is a total drag setup truck, so what else would you do but a B&M really on here? You know, it just makes sense. The TCI controller is a pretty basic one. Mainly, it, you know, it lets me know, to tell you the truth, it lets me know what gear I'm in, gives me an idea of, of where, the, where the oil pressure and fuel pressure is at. Pretty basic on the, on the TCI. The couple of switches you notice on the dash panel here, this one kind of copper looking switch that if you need more fuel you can dump more fuel in obviously there's no need for that as a matter of fact it's you know for street driving it's dumping a lot of fuel that's why it keeps loading up and if you don't clear it the truck stalls the other switches you see here one actually turns on and off the tci unit you don't have to have it on if you don't want and the other switch there this thing used to have paddle shifts he got rid of the paddle shifters on here but you used to have the ability, if you wanted to paddle shift, you could come on or off the paddles. And the little Grant steering wheel, gotta admit, I think it fits it perfectly. You know, there's a lot of vehicles I would go, no, I don't, I, I don't like it, but I like it on this. I think, it's, I think it just fits the modality of what this truck is. I mean, this is a fun one. This isn't trying to be anything other than exactly what it is. It was a truck that he had zero money into and he built it into a friggin' monster. And, and he has a blast in it. He goes out and does burnouts, which is, to be honest with you, it's harder to not do burnouts than it is to do them. You know, there's not a lot of weight in the back. You'll notice when you look inside of the tailgate, there's the, there's the piece over the top of the bed, and then inside the bed, there's a couple of boxes mounted in there inside of these boxes here. There's sandbags to try to get a little bit of weight down in the rear end. Boy, the brakes sure work on here. I mean, just the lightest touch and you've got so much brake. It's, it's, 
it's really nice especially with the amount of power that this thing's throwing down it is definitely a monster All right, you guys, well, what do you think of Nino's little 1985 S10? Pretty badass, right? I mean, not something I would typically get fired up about, I gotta admit. But anything that I could put my foot in and have it effortlessly do burnouts like that, you kind of catch my interest. That's just pure fun. And the thing, you know, when you're just cruising in it, it actually drives really nice. I mean, this little truck feels great. And it's just a blast to put your foot in it and feel the wheels spin, it kicks out a little bit on you. It's just really fun little truck. Nino, thanks again for bringing over yet another one, man. I appreciate you, dude. And I'm kind of wondering at this point, how many vehicles do you have left? I guess we're about to find out, aren't we? So anyways, you guys, thanks for hanging and watching and supporting the channel. I truly do appreciate it. Uh, it's really fun to watch the numbers continue to grow. And that's because of you guys. Truly appreciate it. So thanks, and I will see you in the next episode. All right, man. Later.